here this morning. Uh, another beautiful day to, to spend in God's house and his presence. Um, you know, we have the, the privilege of learning a little bit more today about sharing uh, all the ways that God has blessed us uh, with those around us. And uh, we've got songs that kind of talk about giving thanks and, and being sacrificial. So if you're able to stand, please do, and we'll get started. Give it all, my life and all, my heart is 
This man who needs amazing kind of grace For forgiveness at a price I could pay I'm not perfect, so I thank God every day There was Jesus There was Jesus In the waiting, in the searching
Like a blessing buried in the broken pieces Every minute, every moment of where I'm in or where I'm going Even when I didn't know it or couldn't see it There was Jesus There was Jesus There was Jesus there was Jesus. Well, good morning, everybody. It's good to see everybody here. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we love you. We lift your name on high. You are a good, good Father. And I want to lift up every man, woman, child, and youth here in our beloved sanctuary and their friends and loved ones and lift up all those who aren't here. You know our needs, Father, our burdens, concerns, our praises. Help us to do as Jesus spoke us to do in your holy word in Luke 631. Do to others as you would have them do to you. Help us to display the fruit of your Holy Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Strengthen our faith life, Father. Help us to be true worshipers in spirit and in truth. Help us be Jesus' hands and feet upon this earth and remind us that we may be the only Jesus some people ever see. Give us a boldness to testify as to what you've done in our lives. Thank you, Father, for your holy word in John 3, 16, Jesus speaking. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And thank you, Father, that as true believers, we will also have a joy-filled, abundant, victorious life here upon this earth. And we have you to carry us through fiery trials and tribulations. And Father, for your holy word in Ephesians 3, 20 to 21, which says, Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever in Jesus mighty name and now the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples and us the Lord's Prayer our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name Well, those who are assisting with the offering, will you please come forward? And as they do, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we ask that you give bounty to your church, that as the offering is passed and we give your tithes and our gifts to you, let it go to build your kingdom. Let it go to helping those in need. Let it go to giving strength where, there's need, where there needs to be strength and hope where there needs to be hope. Help us to be good stewards of your, of your, uh, your works, of your, of your gifts and tithes. God, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
the bound say I am free because of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ his Son. He's given Jesus Christ, his son. And now let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich because of what the Lord has done. And children, come on down for the children's lesson. morning how are you guys good do you know what the word tithe means tithe t-i-t-h-e yeah it's even spelled funny well tithing if you um pastor kevin is going to read a scripture today where they talk about tithing and how much to tithe. And it says one-tenth. So all of you guys are in school, right? Maybe daycare? Have you started with fractions? <laughs> okay. That is a big word as well. <laughs> so fractions are when you talk about a piece of something. You have a whole thing and you talk about a piece of it. So we are about to tithe all of this stuff I got up here, okay? So we're going to start first with a dime. Y'all all know what a dime is, right? Okay. So how many pennies does it take to make a dime? Ten. Exactly. So if I said tithe a part of that dime, you would take one penny, right? And there, you can have that penny. Okay. If I had a hundred dollar bill and I had how many ten dollar bills does it take to make a hundred dollar bill? Ten. I didn't have a ten dollar bill today because I haven't been to the ATM, but we're going to pretend these ones are tens. So if I had a ten dollar bill in my wallet, and I gave it to you, I would have given you a tenth. So I would have tithed. Okay? Okay, so we have a loaf of bread here. It has 20 pieces of bread in it. Does, oh, does anybody know what a tenth of this loaf of bread would be? Huh? No, not half. Two. So now, if I take 
two pieces. Will you hold my two pieces of bread? Thank you. I just tithe to you. Smarties. Do you know how many Smarties are in every single roll? This is a fun fact for everyone, by the way. How many do you think are in this roll? There are 15 Smarties in every roll. So if I wanted to give you a tenth, a tithe of my Smarties, I would have to give you one and a half. I was going to bite it, but I didn't know which kind of half. So if you hold both of these rolls, my tenth, okay? one red gummy bear, and I said I wanted to tie the part of that, that means I'd have to cut off a tenth of it. That would be like one foot. Okay, there we go. So you keep my gummy bear foot, thank you. Now I have a bag of M&Ms. How many, I did not count them yet, <laughs> me too. So let's say I have 50 M&Ms in here. I think there might be more. How many would I give you if I wanted to tithe? Five, exactly. So I'm going to give you five M&Ms. Okay, well, there's seven. Just eat two. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You love M&M's? I have everything you love up here. But that, that is what um, the scripture is talking about, is tithing to the church and about what we give to the church. And in the big loaf of bread, two pieces, that's not a lot of bread. You could give the heel in the heel. Nobody eats that anyway. Um, the gummy bears, you just want a foot. Just one little foot. But that's what um, was in one of the commandments they're talking about in Leviticus. And I have not read Leviticus in a really long time. So thank you, Pastor Kevin. I had to look like five times before I found it in the Bible. So anyway, that's what we talk about when we say tithing. It's just giving a portion. I just wanted you guys to understand what the word meant. Because you're going to hear, as long as you go to church, you're always going to hear about tithing. But tithing is to do God's work as well. It doesn't matter if you give a foot or a half a smarty. I, I know, they're beautiful. So, yeah, you don't want to fall. So, you can give a foot, a half a smarty, and it doesn't matter which one you get. I see. But most importantly, I'm just happy you're here. So let's all bow our heads and say a prayer real quick. Will you pray with me? Will you put your hands together? Dear Lord, thank you for these children. Thank you for the homes they represent. And thank you for everything you do for us. And we hope we can do the same for you. In your name we pray. Amen. Now, I have some Smarties for everybody. I'm going to give you two because only 15 Smarties is not a lot to eat. We're going to eat 30. So there you go.
Good morning. Today's scripture comes from Leviticus 27, 30 through 34. I love Leviticus. <laughs> A tithe of everything from the land, whether grain from the soil or fruit from the trees, belongs to the Lord. It is holy to the Lord. Whoever would redeem any of their tithe must add a fifth of the value to it. Every tithe of the herd and flock, every tenth animal that passes under the shepherd's rod, will be holy to the Lord. No one may pick out the good from the bad or make any substitution. If anyone does make a substitution, both the animal and its substitute become holy and cannot be redeemed. These are the commands the Lord gave Moses at Ma Mount Sinai for the Israelites. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Test. All right, there we go. Well, good morning, Caldwell Methodist. Good you know, I, I'm very, very proud of each and every one of you. You know, I, I expected when the children's message got up there and was talking about tithing that half of you would split. But, uh, yeah, well, we're here. Today's the day. Today's the, uh, the day every year that every church cringes about when they hear that word tithing. This is, today's the, the sermon on stewardship. Are you ready? I didn't sound enthusiastic. You know, when I visited the board of <laughs> when I visited the board of stewards when I first came here last December, um, uh, just so you know, uh, the, their interview I was expecting like thirty minute interview or something like that. They kept me here for almost two hours. They grilled me for an hour and a half on things and stuff. And, and one of the questions that, that I was asked is uh, is how I would preach and how I would lead the church. And, and then one and one of the questions specifically says. Asks, uh, are you going to be a preacher that preaches about hell? And my response to that individual is, I'm not going to call Brad out. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> is, is it in the Bible? Because if it's in the Bible, then I'm likely going to preach about it. Amen. And, and, uh, and, you know, there's actually 149 verses in the Bible that talk about hell. So if you haven't heard me speak about it, eventually it's probably going to happen. But so, so it's likely we're going to talk about that from sometime, but, but not today. Today we're not going to talk about that. Today we're going to talk about something that is the second most mentioned thing in the Bible. The second most mentioned thing in the Bible. Does anybody know what the first most mentioned thing in the Bible is? Love. I'm so proud of you. Yes, love. Love. And next to love, money is mentioned two, in 2,350 verses in the Bible. Now, why do you think those two things are mentioned so much in the Bible? Well, I have an idea. You know, my, my mom, when I was uh, uh, growing up, always told me to put my shoes away. Always told me to put my shoes away. In fact, today, my wife tells me all the time, you need to put your shoes away. <laughs> you know why I keep getting told that I uh, to need to put my shoes away? Because I keep forgetting to put my shoes away, Right? She doesn't remind me of things that I do all the time. She reminds me of the things I'm messing up, right? So maybe love and money are things that we do wrong. We keep messing them up. You know, it's often our mistakes that are discussed more than our achievements, right? I, I think it's, it's good to, to, to celebrate our achievements, but, but in acknowledging that we've achieved something doesn't help us to grow, Right? It's understanding where we're failing that helps us to grow. Now, before we go, go too far down this road, this is a, this is a topic that, that is sometimes tough to hear, right? So uh, let's prepare our hearts to receive this earnestly. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we give you praise today, God, that we get to talk about your scripture, that we get to hear your word, and that we get to know what it means to give to know what it means to tithe. God, uh, if I get in the way of this message, God, push me aside. I'm not important here. You are, and your word is important. And God, I, I pray that this, this word gets burned into our hearts because it is too important, 2,350 verses important. 
It's too important for us to ignore today. God, help us to to hear your word openly. Help us to be honest with ourselves. Help us to grow in your message today. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. So stewardship. Every pastor's favorite sermon, right? I don't know a single pastor that loves to preach on stewardship. You know, last week we heard testimonies about, about giving and how Brad and uh, uh, Camby Blaha and how Kirk Chapman have been blessed in their, through their giving. And, and we learned that it's not about giving to the church. And the way Kirk put it is, is that uh, there are thousands of reasons why we should not give to the church, right? And, and what he said is he can't figure out one reason why we shouldn't give to God because it's all about giving to God. So how do we decide what to give? You know, that always seems to be the question. How much do we give? Well, the biblical standard of a tithe is 10%. We, we learned that from the, the scripture in Leviticus, right? And, and, you know, Leviticus is actually a fascinating book in the Bible. I, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy are the ones that, uh, that people skip over because they seem boring, right? But I, I challenge you, go watch uh, YouTube videos on the Bible Project about these books, and all of a sudden it'll open them up to you. And they're, they're so much more interesting than they look on the face because they look like a bunch of rules and number uh, uh, census and stuff like that, but it's so much more. But we understand from our scripture from Leviticus that, and they use animals to, do, uh, to set that standard, uh, every tenth animal, right, that passes under the shepherd's rod. Do we, do we have any... Uh, uh, farmers or ranchers out here, right? There's a few out in the area, right? And, they, and yeah, they, separating a herd, right? Do the animals line up based on the way you want them to go? <laughs> no, no, they don't, right? They get in the line the way they fight to get in the line, right? So, and what he's saying is that you don't decide what to, uh, which animal to give. It's the tenth one that you give, right? Well, when I began my tithing, I, I, I thought it was that I was called to give. The problem I found is that tithing is not giving. Tithing is not giving. Let me explain that. Listen to what this verse says. A tithe of everything from the land, whether grain from the soil or fruit from the trees, belongs to the Lord. It is holy to the Lord. He said again, it belongs to to the Lord. It's not yours. It's not mine. It's not the church's. A tithe is not something that we give to God. It's something that belongs to God. It's like, it's like driving your parents' car and saying, this is my car. No. You get to use the car, but it's your parents' car. It's not your car. It, it, or worse, it's like taking credit for something that you didn't do. Here's the truth. Our God sought fit to create the whole universe, and then he created us, and then he handed all of creation over to us so that we might be good stewards of it. Is it still God's creation? Do we ever say this is Kim's creation or Joe's creation? No, this is God's creation. He handed it over to us. so He gave it to us so that we may be stewards of it. Listen to the story in Genesis uh, Genesis 1, uh, beginning in verse 28. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Remember that? Subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Then God said, I give you every seed bearing fruit on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit in the seed. And, and it goes on and on and on. God gave us this so that we may be stewards over it, so that we may subdue it, so that we may rule over it, right? Everything that we have, everything that you filled your house in, your car in, your children with, everything that we have is a gift of God. Everything that we have is a gift of God. It has been given to us so that we may be good stewards of that. So that we might take care of it. 
Anybody have one of those kids that gets a toy and breaks it in three days? That was me, <laughs> just so you know. I was that one kid. Of the, my, my brother and my sister took good care of their toys. I destroyed every one of them. But that's not how we're called to be. We're called to take care of the gift of God. So if God gave us all creation, then why does he want us to give it back to him? Why do we need to give back to God? Well, truth is, we don't. We don't need to give back anything. If someone gives you a present at Christmas or on your birthday, are you required to give it back to them? Of course not. Then why does God ask us to give? I think that's the question that plagues most of us, right? If God doesn't need anything and God can create anything out of nothing, then why does God need us to give to him? It seems like God is, is asking for tribute for his sovereignty, right? He, he's the almighty, he's the powerful, therefore you need to give to him or he will smite you, right? That's not the sermon today. That's not the message in the Bible either. It's not true at all. The first thing to consider is why God gave to us in the first place. Why did God give to us? He could have created all of creation and kept it to himself, but instead he creates us for the purpose of giving creation to us. Why? We give, the, we give gifts because of how it makes people feel, right? We love to see the joy on the face of somebody when they receive a gift, right? Right? When they open it up, especially when we've put a lot of thought into it. When, when it's not a Best Buy gift card, but when it's something very special to them. Like an ES350 or 355 guitar from Gibson or something like that. That would be great. You know. But no. <laughs> but when we put deep thought into a gift and we give it to somebody, we experience joy when they receive the gift. Right? That's why God gave to us. He gave to us so that we could have joy, so that he could see our joy and have joy through us. In John 15, Jesus says this, As the Father has loved me, so I love you. Now remain in my love. What was the first thing that's most talked about in this book? Love, right? Okay, good. If you keep my commandments, which Leviticus is a bunch of commandments, right? If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love. Just as I have kept my father's commands and remain in his love, I told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. So that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. You know, I think there's a lot of people in this world that are chasing joy and can't find it, right? Like it's a commodity that they want to, to grab a hold of, to hold on to. It's like when you get that new car, right? You get the new car and you love the car, and then after three months, it's just your car. It doesn't have the same joy as when you first received it, right? Receiving a gift is great. It feels good to know that somebody cares for you enough that they would give you a gift. However, giving a gift usually brings more joy than giving one, or than receiving one, doesn't it? Jesus says to keep God's commandments, and if you do, your joy will be complete. He commands us to give 2,350 times. Commands us to give. And he commands us that so that our joy will be complete. We give gifts to our children, our parents, our friends, even strangers. And we do that because we care about them, right? We do that because it brings us joy. We give because we love. And so often we give so much more to people that we care about, while at the same time we hold back when it comes to God. 
I mean, consider this. Many, many will be going, to, uh, going out to eat uh, after, after service today, right? And you're going to go to a restaurant, and you'll sit down, and you'll order your food, probably mas fajitas or something like that, right? And uh, then when the bill comes, right, you're going to give a tip, and usually you're going to give 20%. God's only asking 10. You'll give 20% to a stranger that you don't know. And we fight to give our 10% to God who we love. Listen to this story from Mark 12. You've probably heard this before, but I think it's a good reminder today. Jesus sat down opposite the place where the offerings were put in and watched the crowd putting their money into the temple treasury. Many rich people threw in large amounts, but a poor widow came and put two very small copper coins worth only a few cents. Calling his disciples to him, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put more into the treasury than all the others. They gave out of their wealth, but she, out of her poverty, put in everything, all she has to live on. Why did the poor widow give all that she had to the temple? How did she do that? We have, uh, she, she may have been uh, starving to death or she, she, th- she that, that was all she had to live on, right? That was all the money she had left. And, and she gives it to a bunch of rabbis and Pharisees that are living high on the hog, right? Well, her gift was not to those men. Her gift was to God. I have no idea what kind of life that person led. I have no clue about her situation, but we know this, that she gave all that she had. She didn't know where her next meal was going to come from, but she trusted God to provide it. You know, the same day that God created all of the universe, he gave it to us that we might be fruitful. And then the same day, and, and, and the same God that she trusted to take care of her then is the one that she's trusting to take care of her this day. Jesus said in his Sermon on the Mount, and why, don't, why do you worry about clothes? See the flowers that grow in the field. They do not labor or spin, and yet I tell you, not even Solomon in his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you? You of little faith? So don't, do not worry saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the pagans run over all these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them. But seek ye first the king, his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. If these flowers will be here today and, and thrown in the fire tomorrow, that's, that's, that's how I take care of flowers. I'm lucky if I get one extra day, actually. But when God created the universe, the first thing he did was give it to us. And then, so why do we give to God last? Why do we put our tithing and gifts as our last item on our budget? God is asking for 10% of all that we receive to go back to him so that we may know the joy of giving that he experienced giving to us. That same joy that the poor widow experienced. He isn't asking us so that we can, so he can have tribute over our stuff. He, what he wants is for us to have the joy he has, for our joy to be complete. His promise is real. If we trust him, He will take care of us. This was one of the first lessons that he taught his disciples. When he first sent them out in pairs, what did he tell them? He said, don't take any money with you. Don't take any extra clothes. Don't bring any extra food. And they did that so that they would have to completely rely on God to provide. And you know what? They all came back. And none of them starved. Not a single one of them. In fact, they were all eager to do it again when they came back. 
Maybe you're hearing all this and you're thinking, yeah, I hear you, Pastor, but these are all, all biblical characters. See, things are different today, right? No. They're not. You know, we, we, we look at the world today and we say, oh, there's all these bad things that are going on and stuff like that. It's worse than it's ever been. Have you read the Bible? I mean, have you read the massive genocide, cities destroyed, conquering people, throwing people into slavery? I don't think it's worse today. I think we just haven't got any better. You know, when I started in ministry, I was, I was or before I started in ministry, I was, I was making a, a lot more than I am now. I didn't have a regular income, though. I was working off of commissions. But overall, I made a good living, right? The problem was is I trusted myself with my finances. And I didn't give like I should have. When I accepted the call to ministry, that year we had come out of a, a pretty nasty financial crisis in our, in our home. We had huge debts, and my credit score from lending and not being able to pay back my uh, uh, my creditors had dropped in the low 400s. And if anybody's ever been there, they know that even payday loans won't even give you a loan when, uh, when your credit score is that low. So I began working as a pastor, making a third of what I once was. And my priority became my giving and my finances. And within two years, my credit score had jumped from a 400 to a 700, making a third of what I was making with the same bills. There's a lot of things that happened to help us along the way, but I certainly don't think it was things that I did. The only thing I did was trust God with my finances. That's the only thing I did. And there was this other thing that, uh, that I had done right at the beginning of that is I took this course called Financial Peace University. And uh, this is the, the same course that we're going to begin next Sunday afternoon at 1 o'clock. And I'll tell you what, the first lesson is free. You don't have to commit to it. Show up to the first lesson. If it interests you, then, then stay for the rest. But come to the first lesson. It's free. And then the first lesson, the course teaches you two things. You need an emergency fund. And you need a budget. And what's the number one thing that's on his budget? Tithing. You know, never guess how much, it mean, how much it is. There's a formula on there, right? It says income. That's your income. That's how much money you make, right? And the next thing says income times 0 0.10. That's your tithing. Before you look at your mortgage, before you look at your, uh, your car note or your insurance or health insurance or anything else, food, you'll starve. It, uh, uh, you may starve, but you're going to pay your tithing. That's the first thing is your tithing. Don and I really took that to heart, and we give. Our, our giving is not just money either. Uh, we give God's tithes, but we give beyond that. You know why? Because there's joy in giving. Because when we give, we feel complete. We give to this church not because I work here, because we see God working here. That's why we give to this church, because we see God working here. Now think for a moment about this church. Think about what this church means to you. And if you've been here a while, there's a lot of joyful memories here in this church. And there's some times that you really got ticked off, right? But think about what this church means to you. The same could be said probably about your family. You have some joyful moments with your family, and I bet you there were some arguments along the way, too. This church was created 183 years ago. This church has 183 years of legacy. These buildings didn't just pop up miraculously. But what do these buildings do? We had this thing called a Kalachi Festival. Anybody hear about that? Yeah, it was yesterday, in case you missed it. And I learned also they call it a Kalach. Yeah, it's a clutch. I'm going to have to learn that, I guess. If I'm going to live here. I better learn it's a clutch, not a clutchy. But, um, but we were able to, they were able to use this space because people gave to God. And God used those finances to provide a space for them to hold this 
this wonderful thing for the community. And so many other things that happen here. It happened 183 years of legacy of people coming to Christ, being baptized, growing their families, being part of a community all happened here because God is working here in this church and because God has more work to do in this church and people were faithful to give to God and the work that he's doing here. There are thousands of reasons why you can decide not to give to the church, but it's not about giving to the church. It's about giving to God. I think the work that God is doing here, I give my gifts and tithes to God, but I deposit them here in the temple of this church because I know that my tithes and gifts will become, some, become a wonderful gift for others. Because God's going to use those, those funds to do amazing things in this church. What do you treasure most in your world? When it comes to tithing and giving, this is the verdict. This is the point of everything. What do you do with your treasure? Because the first line I'm on your budget the first thought of the day, the first way you spend your money is what has your worship. Take a moment this afternoon and pull up your bank statement. Take a look at where you spend your money. When you see that, you will see where your priorities are. Where does God fit in your priorities? Now, I know I've quoted a lot of scripture in this message, and for some of you, you're like, yes. Some of you are like, no. Well, I got one more for you. And I I I want to leave you with the words of Jesus. When it comes to giving, I don't want you to take my word for it. It's not about me. It's about you and your relationship to God. So hear Christ's words from Matthew 6, 19, from the Sermon on the Mount. Do not store up yourself treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but store up your treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Where is your heart? Where's your treasure? Tithing and giving is so much more than just money. It's about putting trust in the God who created you. It's about knowing that no matter what comes, he will be there for you. No matter what troubles come your way, he walks with you through your joy and your pain. And that through giving, you can experience a piece of the joy that God experienced when he gave to you. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks that you have given to us. We don't deserve your grace. You gave us everything in the world, and then when we turned away from you, you gave us your own life. And when we took your life from you, you took it back and gave us grace. God, we ask that uh, you help us. Changing our behavior is tough. But we know that we can do it with you by our side. Help us to be prayerful. Help us to grow in you. Help us to know that giving is so much more than the 10%. It's about our relationship to you. It's about putting those first things first, the important things. There's nothing more important than our love for you. God, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
Good morning. So a few announcements this morning. Um, you have a chance today to take your directory photo. It is in the fellowship hall right after this service, uh, 9.30 to 10.30. It is a $10 fee, just to let you know that. Also, um, today is the event for the Make and Take Mums and Garters. If you want to just come by, it's 2 to 5, and just see what we're doing. You're more than welcome to. Come hang out and, and see what is Good, what we're doing and if you'd like to stop by with any materials or any donations that you would like to you're more than welcome to do that also um, choir practice starts on the 12th and then your second chance to retake your directory photo is September the 17th um, I also do want to mention on the 17th is the bridal shower for Haley Clifford Cox and if you wanted to RSVP you would do that with Becky thank you all so much hope you'll have a great day Can I get an amen? amen? 
Amen. We believe. The, oh, I want to share with you one more thing. I'm going to do this all month. You may have seen these out here. These are our pledge cards or pledge brochures. And uh, if you didn't get one last week, uh, grab one on the way out and pray over it. Stick it on your refrigerator. Pray over it. On October 1st, we're going to, when we receive communion, this will be an opportunity for us to come and lay this offering at the altar, lay our pledges at the altar before God. As we uh, leave this place and as we begin this, or continue this discernment on, uh, on how we give to God and what God has done for us, remember of all the things that God has given you. Remember those wonderful gifts that you've received in your life. Remember what this church means to you. And don't hold that to yourself. Share that with someone else. Our faith is built on the Gospels, the good news. And you have good news. We need to share that with the world. So go forth in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We believe in God the Father. We believe in Jesus Christ. We believe in the Holy Spirit, and he's given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion. We believe that he conquered death. We believe in the resurrection, and he's coming back. He's coming back again. He's coming back again. We believe, we believe.